In this video, we're going to look at everything you can do with Select Object. Select Object is a PowerShell command that you can use to process data on your pipeline. It allows you to select properties, exclude properties, and expand properties of objects passed to it. You can also do things like skip a certain amount of objects in the array, select at the end or the beginning a certain amount. Um, and it also has some performance implications that we can talk about uh, that were added in version 3 of PowerShell to uh, allow it to access the commandlets that are piping data to it. So in this video, we'll just kind of step through each one of those features. The first parameter that I want to look at is the property parameter. The property parameter is used for selecting one or more properties on the object and returning them rather than returning the entire object itself. Uh, this can be good to just narrow down uh, the data of objects returned. For example, get process, uh, the process object actually has tons of properties and most of the time you don't need all that information. So for example, if I wanted to return just the property names of processes running on my machine, I would call get process select object property name. So as you can see there, I actually have a big list of um, the process names that are currently running on my machine. You can additionally specify multiple um, properties uh, if you want to to include both of those. So it's going to return an object with those two properties created. And now you can see I have the process name and the process ID for each one of the processes running on my machine. Well, you'll notice with objects returned by select object with the property parameters, it actually creates a new type. So if I call get member on this, you'll see that this type has uh, the name note property that was added based on um, this select object property name. And the type name is actually selected system diagnostics process. And because of that, what you'll notice is things like formatting and that kind of thing don't work the same because it's not actually the same type name. You'll also notice that um, kind of depending how you've created the selected object, it's not a live object anymore and you can't actually invoke things on that particular object. So do note that it's actually a different type. So in addition to being able to select um, static property names, what you can also do is you can specify expressions um, to calculate uh, properties to return with select object. And we can do that with hash tables and script blocks. So if I call get local user, it's actually going to return the name, enabled, and a description of that local user. To actually calculate a property for this user, what I can do is I can specify a script block instead of a string for the property parameter. So I'm going to select the name and then I'm going to specify the script block that gets the current value or the current object with dollar underscore and then we're going to get the SID value. So it's going to output the SID value of my uh, user. And now you can see that I have my users and I have my SIDs output into this second column. Um, as you can see, the second column doesn't really have a friendly name, it just uses the uh, value of the script block that you provided, which is not super helpful if you want to pass this to something else or try to access that property of the object. To work around that, what you can do is you can actually specify a hash table to select object. So in this case, I have this hash table defined, and the hash table has two uh, properties. The first one is label, and that is what is going to show up at the top column there. And then I'm going to specify expression. So that's where I'm going to assign my script block. So it's the same script block that I had up here. Uh, and just in this case, I'm assigning it to this expression parameter. So now when I run it, now you can see that the value here is SID rather than um, the value of that exp uh, expression script block. If you are doing this on the command line, uh, one thing you can do is you can actually kind of shorten the syntax of this by just using the first letter of both of these in the hash table. So rather than uh, label and expression, you can also do L and V, or in E. So if you run that again, it has the same effect as the line above it. Uh, and finally, uh, if you are putting this in a script, one thing um, that might be useful is the ability to uh, pass in a variable. So this would be a good way to kind of make it more uh, descriptive if you are storing this particular thing in a script and easier to read, is you can create a variable of the hash table from there, pass in the label, the expression, and then pass that as a variable to uh, the property parameter of select object. So again, it has the same effect as uh, the previous examples that I was showing before. Now let's take a look at expand property. Expand property works a little different than the property parameter. First of all, you can't specify more than one expand parameter, and you'll see why in a second. 
So when I say get process, select object, expand property name, you're gonna see something similar to when I used property. It just output all the um, process names here on my machine. Um, the difference is what's actually returned from this command line. Rather than returning the original object with all the other things kind of stripped off, um, what it's doing is it's actually returning the value of that parameter directly. So, or that property directly. So if I were to do get member on uh, expand um, property here, what you're gonna see is that this is actually a string. So it actually took and expanded that property and returned the value of that property um, to the uh, command line here rather than um, returning the process object with just the name attached. So additionally, you can actually use property and expand property together. And what this does is it kind of combines the two. So in this case, I'm calling get process. Um, I'm going to call it on code, which is VS code. And then I will uh, expand the modules parameter or property. So this property actually has, um, it has a list of modules that are loaded. So these are like DLLs that are loaded in VS code. Um, from there, I want to include the process name with each one of those modules. So it more or less adds that to the modules where this was wouldn't typically be included with the objects return, but now we're kind of adding an additional property from the process object onto the modules object. So when I run this, what you'll see is um, we have a module that's loaded and you can see that this particular uh, module is my uh, watcher.node module and it has the process name on it. So by default that isn't included and now we are including it by using select object property in conjunction with expand property. Similar to the property parameter, the exclude property parameter is kind of used for the inverse of that parameter. You select a single property and, or single or, or multiple pro properties and it will remove those properties from the object that's returned. When I call get local user, you'll see I have a name, enabled, and description. When I call get local user select object exclude property description, you'll see that we get an object that is returned that does not include the description property. Uh, what you'll notice is when you call get member, the object type is actually not a uh, local user, it's a selected Microsoft PowerShell commands local user, and that's why the formatting doesn't work as expected, because it's not actually that same object type, it's the selected version without that description parameter. A simple but powerful uh, parameter for select object is unique. Unique allows you to select unique characters or integers from uh, an array of objects that you pipe through select object. Um, and by default, it's going to take that entire list and find the unique ones. So you can see I have one, 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 two, three, four. If I pop, pipe that to select object with unique, I get one, two, three, four. Uh, if you include things like uh, the paging parameters, like first, uh, I want to select the first three and I want the unique ones in there. And if I run this particular command, you'll see that I just get one. Um, and the reason that is, is because um, I am only taking the first three and I want the first three um, values and the unique among those first three. Finally, we're going to look at paging and waiting. So paging is the ability to select, um, you know, subsets of data um, and kind of page through that data. So you could select, you know, the first five, move to the next page, next five. You see this with websites where you have pages full of data and tables and that kind of thing. Um, so the idea with uh, some of the um, the select object parameters here is the ability to kind of move through the data um, by skipping particular sections of the code. So we're also going to talk a little bit about how um, the paging works with select object because um, it has some performance improvements that were introduced in v3 to um, allow it to manipulate the command that's actually being piped to select object. So I have this function here called get object. Uh, it will return the number of objects that you specify in the count parameter. Uh, and you can see that I'm just returning these hash tables that include an integer that um, is being returned in that array of objects. I also have a um, write verbose in here to uh, kind of output the index that we're processing and then a start sleep command to sleep one second um, for every object. So if I were to just call get object, You'll see that uh, every second it outputs a new name and value here with my prop and my value. Uh, if you select object, um, I am going to pipe it over to 
select or get object to select object and call first two. So it's going to return the first two items um, for this particular pipeline. And now you can see that it actually ran and got one and two, and it actually took one point. Uh, 0 0.015 seconds, and that's because of the, of the um, performance improvements they made to select object. It'll actually stop the pipeline from processing once it hits that um, current amount of objects collected. Now, if I were to actually include um, a skip, so I'm going to skip the first one and then take the next two, uh, what you'll see there is we get two and three, and our pipeline processing took two seconds. That's because um, we hit the start sleep. Um, two times. We actually went through this loop um, three times, and then once it got that third value, uh, it pretty much canceled the execution, and uh, start sleep didn't actually run the entire time. Uh, another parameter is last, so you can select the last object in the array. In this case, we have to actually wait for all the items to be written to the pipeline, and we're going to call start sleep um, five times, so you can see that it took five seconds to return the last value. Uh, skip last, we'll skip the last item instead of skipping the first item. So you'll see here that we get one, two, three, four, and then we'll skip five. You can also select indexes. So an index into the array would be like uh, starting at zero through uh, four in this case. So I want index two and three. Once I run that, you'll see that we have to step through. Again, it takes three seconds because we had to go through the array four times. And we end up with index um, two and three, which are the numbers three and four. You can also choose to skip indexes. So rather than returning three and four, we're going to return everything except three and four. So kind of to um, illustrate how the processing works, uh, we're going to turn on verbose. So I am calling get object verbose, and I'm piping it to select object. And from there, I'm calling first two. So what you're going to see there is that we have processing one, processing two, and then we end up with these two values in the pipeline. So if I were to actually call get object select object first two skip one, what it's going to do is it's going to have to process three objects, but it's only going to return the uh, the last two. So let's do that. You can see we processed one, we processed two, and we processed three, but only two and three were returned. So it although it did um, start this. Uh, start processing this value, it did not return it to the pipeline. You can actually change the behavior of select object by using the wait parameter. So the wait parameter will ensure that uh, the processing of the previous command is not stopped when uh, select object kind of hits its uh, hits its value that you specified. For example, first two will stop processing after it gets those two values. In some cases, you may not want that to happen. So I may want get object to generate all five of those objects, but only return one to the pipeline. So that's where you'd use the wait object or the wait parameter. So when I run this, what you're going to see is that I got my first one because I'm saying select first one, but it went ahead and processed all five of those values um, rather than just returning after the first one. So again, if I were to remove wait from here, what you'll see is that get object uh, is only called once. And we will only see that one value go out there. And it only took six milliseconds to run that command because we never hit start sleep. So that is an example of how the processing of select object can affect previous commands in the pipeline um, when you're using it with things like first, skip, last, skip, last, for example. In this video, we went over the ins and outs of select object and how you can use it to manipulate data in your PowerShell pipelines.